What is the ultimate goal of communism? Is it brotherly love? Free healthcare? A fulfilling life? Oh, my dear misguided child, it is none of those things. Huh? The ultimate goal of communism is the achievement of world peace through death and destruction of everything good and wonderful in the world. But a goal as lofty as this would take generations to achieve. Unless, of course, we unleash the awesome power of the sun upon the world to bring forth the radiation-filled atmosphere that is a commie utopia. Which is even worse than when you go poop on a cold winter's day and are met with the icicle enema that is Poseidon's kiss. So let's begin. We finally rename Cancer Girl to Hymen Poppin, an action the women of North Ikea are all too familiar with. To overcome the PTSD, they consume themselves in their labors, while the glorious supreme leader consumes himself in his own godlike presence. Basking in his totalitarian rule, he creates more rock-type slaves to further boost his ego. Then, a couple of good old boys decided to go out commie hunting. Well, that didn't sit right with us nor my friend over there. Y'all may know him as DMZ. Well, DMZ took those good old boys out back and untied their balloon knots to the extent that we couldn't tell mouth from asshole. And the bloody footprints was the last we seen of them boys. We're then visited by one of the only factions that still like us. For now, they bring meager wares to trade, but we pick up what little we can. Just consider it a microtransaction. Those are popular these days, right? That's also what the harem call intercourse with Rimjong. Because of our plans to nuke the world, new protective equipment is commissioned, now with 30% more dystopia. Speaking of dystopia, the nuclear dawn research has been completed. Those pesky UN weapons inspectors never even saw this one come. Now, I don't know how any of these things work, and we need packed concrete to even build them. So new production facilities are created and crafting assignments changed. To further our wartime capabilities, the researching of war caskets begins. I mean... What communist wouldn't love to lock themselves into an iron casket of eternal suffering? It's like a Muslim extremist suicide vest, just more fashionable. With the new production facilities, we can glimpse at what powers we shall soon behold. And Bubba, it's making me pop a tent and leak through my denim. How it feels to chew five gum. Crafting continues, and Rimjong makes his rounds giving encouraging authoritarian speeches to his labor force to hasten their progress. Probably threats of violence against their families. It is the Kami way after all. But but we summon a trader, for we lack the necessary components to create our new technologies. We're able to get some advanced components and precious uranium. Mmm, so tasty. The key ingredient of our geopolitical pie. Looks like I'm not the only one leaking through denim. So because of all the recently ruined denim, we're going to grow cloth once again. We stream through research with the completion of our commie coffins, and continue to finger blast our way to the apex of technology. As for the apex of romance technology, Rimjong fails to romance Hlugtarn, and Hlugtarn fails to romance Rimjong. I guess when you're constantly coming in your pants, the desire to pursue another wanes. Oh well. We pick up a quest to fight contemptible rats that will give Rimjong some fancy bling. Naturally, the rats are unable to penetrate Senpai DMZ, and their carcasses shall add to the piles of bones littering the foyer. Rimjong adds to his personal wealth with his new shiny ring, and a bulk goods trader arrives. Because of the increased strain on our power grid, more toxic garbage needs to be created. Like a true kami, I don't even care about pollution anymore. It's just part of our way of life at this point. Our storyteller must be a Leninite because he throws another bulk goods trader at us. He really wants us to bring about world peace. And Rimjong's kami wizard powers grow, just like his ambitions. A cat girl fell from the sky and we decide to rescue her. I was thinking about adding her to the harem, but honestly, after saving her, I forgot that she even existed. So, like our previous cat friend, we'll never hear from them again. We modernize our research room and a few feral cats attack the colony. Must have followed Rimjong's laser focus. Alright, that uh, that joke was a stretch. But they of course die and we'll move on. The Calutron is under construction. It's what will create the enriched uranium needed for all things nuclear. The multi-analyzer is done being researched and to continue we'll need to build one. We are hurting for advanced materials though. And apparently creating enriched uranium counts as brewing? Guess we now know why vodka's so strong. So Poonter Trap will now be baking yellow cakes along with her fine meals and it will be ready after two short days. In the meantime, we'll go into mortars. Why? Because I want some giant artillery like a real Rimjong, dammit. It shall help us prepare for the inevitable war for peace. Wow, it's like Beijing in here. And then those capitalist pig dogs send down their drones. Our only answer to such provocation is the tried and true human wave tactics. No, actually, I, I try and have Ibn Flog cause a chain explosion. She was, however, too slow. 
women shooters, am I right, boys? And the murder dildos press their attack. Through sheer force of will, we destroy them. With, uh, minor injuries, we then take out the weather machine. I, however, failed to see the gigantic turret lurking behind the fog machine, and it starts blasting. Now's the time for human wave tactics. We get inside its minimum range and shred it to bits. I had the fast speed going, and it kinda blew up in our face. But the ladies of this colony should be used to that by now. So the day is won, and Vajimir is so happy she forgets to go to the hospital and just kind of bleeds out in her room for a while. But she'll be fine. And we got some much needed materials out of the automaton sex toys. I just hope the blood in Vajimir's room isn't from sex toys. But anyway, our uranium is finally complete. I can almost taste the glowing in the dark even now. Another thing I can taste is the damn near perfect colonist for us right now. 17 crafting and 16 intellectual? By God. She's magnificent. You know what must be done. Welcome to the gulag, bitch. We're then met with a raid and some surprise meteors. My favorite kind of meteor. And Rimjong grows in power. If he gets too much stronger, he'll be slamming down more wieners than Joey Chestnut. Careful, ladies. I tested his new power, which basically adds power to our grid, and Rimjong started glowing with these techno-type wisps. Why? I have no idea. But it looks cool. So that's... Well, cool. Good job, Rimjong. Then I discover why nothing is being crafted. To make any of the nuke stuff, you need a crafting skill of 10, which we don't have. So it's a good thing we captured a future Kami. We need her meow more than ever. Play your cards right and Rimjong may even try and romance you. Lucky girl. Another trade ship further increases our technological materials, and the multi-analyzer should soon be completed. Like right now. And now we can get fabrication. Wonderful. Everything's coming up Rimjong. He's gonna have such a good episode today. Especially later. We do a work drive on Hyman Poppin because she's close to 10, so I'm working on training her up. I've actually been using the fuck out of Rimjong's various powers this time around, and I gotta say, it makes shit way faster. Funny how that works. We're moving from ironic Orwellian communism into some form of OnlyFans based capitalism. We quickly get fabrication and then into advanced fabrication, all before our nuclear reactor is even completed. Soon, my beloved. Soon. And maybe soon Rimjong will get more poon with him and Hlugtarn sky gazing together. Wow. Ooh, what's that puffy crowd look like to you, Rimjong Chan? Power. It's now time for more standardization. Rebranding, if you will. Our brand should just be called Fancy Vest, cause, well, you know. And there it is, boys. The light of nuclear dawn. Oh, it's just so amazing. Craft faster, damn it. She's at 9.99 though, so bam, 10. Now we can enrich uranium, bitchin'. To celebrate, go get a pop. Eh? Eh? Yeah, okay. And the war casket foundry goes down. We're now even closer to our ultimate Ethiopian goal, er, uh, utopian goals. I mean, I know we're all starving, but Ethiopian, I mean, come on, we're, we're utopian, goddammit. So Rimjong runs a Kami utopia, propped up by battered and abused Stockholm women, where every other male is labeled an enemy of the state and sent to a farm up north in Nantucket. The whole world doesn't like him due to alleged war crimes. He runs a sweatshop making fancy vests at low cost for foreigners, making extreme profit that could be described as capitalist wet dream. So basically what I'm saying is, we need to invade Poland. And with that, our power problems are a thing of the past. And with the new recruit, our production problem shall also be a thing of the past. Omega sweatshop time now, boys. And then we get another mech cluster, which won't do anything, so we'll just leave it alone and return to our labors. Now then, the final push to unleash peace upon the world is at hand. And what's the best way to achieve world peace? That's right, through nuclear Armageddon. Nuke firing rocket launchers are requisitioned, and as for who shall fire them, well... Perhaps a Kami Coffin? And who should pilot a Kami Coffin except Rimjong? Zone daughter, Vajimir. Yes, it's perfect. In you go. Daddy loves you. And along with a murder machine, we have our very first nuclear warhead. Now I'm really leaking through two layers of thick denim with all this pre-cum. It's just so fucking good. And to match the narrative, Rimjong goes into Static Lord. You know what I'm saying. Also to match this narrative is today's video sponsor. Do you like blowing things up? Do you like killing yourself for idiot extremist ideals? Well, today's sponsor sure does. It's ISIS, the world's premier terrorist service provider. Want to overthrow your government? Call ISIS today for a free consultation. They'll teach you how to martyr yourself for 69 virgins. Why not try their free ISIS app and play Who's Your Favorite Terry? Mine's Osama Bin Laden. He's great. Oh, um, I've just been informed that today's sponsor is the ISS. Yes, the uh, International Space Station, not um ISIS, the terrorist organization. Well, this is awkward. 
Research flies and production continues. Through destructive weapons of war shall the utopian peace of communism reign eternal. Wow, it's fucking getting warm in here. Who knew a nuclear reactor under a mountain would get so hot? That wasn't in the instruction manual. But to be fair, Ikean manuals are designed to be confusing. We want to watch the world burn, what can I say? So a cooling tunnel is built, along with some new recon armor for what is yet to come. Even on the eve of destiny, Rimjong always makes time. Wow, what a guy. Then another trader came by with an offer I couldn't refuse. Oh yeah, bud. It's a weeb sword for our kami casket. How could I not? A passing caravan of retards ends up walking right into those mechanoids from earlier. I haven't seen a greater display of one-sidedness since the time I fought that kid with downs for his ice cream. I got my ass kicked. What? He's got the strength, you know what I'm saying? This was truly a David versus Goliath moment. And wow, what a moment. With the power of fire, they did it. Destroying the entire mech cluster with nary but bows and magic. But at what cost? Well, fuck, I don't care about the cost, because I never got no bill, bubba. So I'll just sit back and pillage the battlefield for those tasty little mech bits. Thanks, fuckers. And so close to the eve of battle, tensions are high. And Rimjong gains some new masterwork armor befitting his splendid title. I then built a howitzer, because why not? We then unload our mass supply of fancy vests with a traitor, and production continues. We are now poised to strike at our enemies. The might of communism has brought Rimjong and his peoples this far, unlocking new ways to murder people and gain control of their minds. Wow, what a beautiful sight to behold. You did it, Rimjong. You fucking did it. But at what cost? What price are you willing to pay for power? Hey, a singular mad rat. Yep, that's to be expected. Oh, and I renamed Cree Stick to Shit Stick because I thought it was funny. I'm really bad at remembering to name people. I know, I know. But hey, look at that. Test firing the howitzer at some endangered elephants. She missed. But it was pretty cool though. And now I'll never use this howitzer again. Neat. So then we get a psychic neuroformer from a traitor and give it to Vajimir. If she is to be the chosen one to follow in her daddy's footsteps and bring forth the ultimate rise of peaceful communistic world destruction, then she should also be a wizard. Oh, and I'm building a carry-all, but m more on that shortly. I'm turning Vajimir into a warlord because, well, Kami Coffin and Weeb Sword? I mean, come on. I had no other choice here, guys. We're then attacked with drop pods. Those pig dogs must know of our plans and are trying to stop us. We quickly deal with the invaders and they flee through the DMZ, which apparently only attacks people when they enter. No exit, I guess. So Rimjong and Ibinfla get married for the second time, and everyone else was too busy preparing for war to attend the ceremony. Ah, but, you know, that's okay. They would have joined for, uh, no reason, but... You'll, uh, you'll soon see what I mean. Oh fuck yeah, bud. And apparently some of those drop pod raiders just kind of hung around. So we now have a hobo population. But hey, you know, I'm here for it, so that's neat. I guess. But we finish our carry-all and can now move on our enemies. Oh, I hope you boys are ready for what's about to happen next. It's very unexpected. Shit stick starts burning this motherfucker down. Turns out she's a pyromaniac. Oops, I missed that one. We could arrest her and throw her in prison in the hopes of rehabilitation. You know, get the criminal off the streets, keep it safe for our children. But here in North Ikea, our justice system is ran by retards who pander to criminals, so we'll just keep her on the streets to rampage and endanger others. Ah, sweet justice. If it was any warmer in here, it'd be just water. Wish she'd rather hide in her room like an Anne Frank recreationist. Man. And Frank would make the best wife for Rimjog. Can't talk back and he can't see his fat booger bod. No, wait, no, no, no. That's uh, Helen Keller. You know, the girl. Yeah, she'd make a good wife. What did he say? <laughs> Nothing but knob slobber, you know what I'm saying? And Frank would probably be richer, though. Old Poonter Trap hasn't broken at all this whole time, I'm pretty sure. She's like a rock. Or just one of them quiet girls, you know. They say the quiet ones are the freakiest, right? <laughs> so then Helen Keller must have been tearing up them sheets, pimp. God damn, playa. She be in them goose downs like... She's so ungrateful for what we've given her. It reminds me of the time I bought my nephew a trampoline for his birthday. Little shit just sat there in his wheelchair and cried. Now then, we depart on a massive expedition to find the fabled and never-before-seen clitoris. Okay, I would never waste my time searching for something that doesn't exist. Actually, we're gonna go and drop some fucking nukes on infidels' heads. The Kami company loads up, and away they go. Upon arrival, the indigenous peoples were retreating into one single location. You think you'll be safe in there? Well, not today, Satan. Y'all just made yourselves an easy target, bubba. Our team moves forward and equips the flashlights of communism. And we strike, launching the word of Rimjong to illuminate the heavens. Turns out not much was destroyed, but Bubba, that's why we brought more. So again we fire. The enemy attempts to surround us, 
So yet more nukes are launched to stem the tide of the capitalist charge. Then the whole city cried out with the same last words as Stephen Hawking. Is what I would say, but it seems like these nukes don't have that great of a range, apparently. Commie technology at its finest, am I right? And then the unthinkable. Vagimir, the heir to the supreme leader himself, was killed. An unimaginable outcome, and totally unexpected. Our remaining forces call a general retreat, but Ibn Flag is struck down. Rimjong's lover and Vajimir's mother bleeds out in the cold radioactive snow. Oh well, she'll probably survive. I should have named her John Binet. How these fucking guys are still alive, I have no idea. Other than, these nukes fucking suck. Klub, Tarn, and Zibbershnicht make their escape to the carryall, and upon flying out and surveying the destruction, they saw an entire civilization role-playing as George Floyd. So, the team returns and brings Rimjong the unfortunate news. Maybe this struck right to the cold black heart of Rimjong. Maybe he finally sees that communism is not the answer. All the good things in his life so far have been brought on in spite of it. Money, technology, family, love, and friendship all counter the communist ideology. Now as his penance he will spend his nights cold and alone. Or he'll hop in bed with Poonter Trap and keep dicking down. But one thing's for sure. You can't dick down the hole in his heart. Ibn Flag may yet be saved, but dear sweet Vajimir, who never knew a life outside of communism, well, may she long be remembered. And I hope all of you boys remember that communism fucking sucks. Can't you see I'm blazing? Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me, I don't need a new one.